Hey there, it's Shannon Graham Cornell coming to you on day 12 of the Facebook Live challenge uh, or event that I'm doing. It's a challenge for myself. Um, I'm really happy to be with you here today. And uh, we're gonna be focusing on talking about maintenance this time. So we've talked a little bit about uh, how to, hey Kristen, uh, how to, um, uh, start getting organized by getting inspired. We looked a little bit at uh, doing some organizing, talked about some decluttering. Now I'm gonna talk about maintenance. So who here has had this problem that you get a space organized just the way you want it? It's perfect, you got you know everything you need, everything you don't need is gone. And then in what seems like a day and a half, it's back to being out of control again. So that is, if you've had that problem, you are not alone. It is a common problem and it's something that we all have to deal with it or all I have to deal with, I'm, I'm sad to say, um, because I, I have a secret to share and that is that getting organized is not a once and done proposition. So I'm sorry to break the bad news but it, it is not. It is something that we need to revisit. It is something that we need to maintain. Getting organized is a project. Staying organized is a process. So we, we need to keep that in mind when we're talking about maintaining. It sounds so nice to be able to say, I'm gonna get organized and once that's done, then it's ju I'm just gonna stay organized and it just doesn't happen that way. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about why that is the case, and then what we can do to prevent that from happening. So um, to start with the why, so it really comes down to three reasons that, uh, that our organized spaces go haywire on us. One is that we don't develop good habits for maintaining that organization. We don't develop what I'm referring to as good put it away habits. So once we've done our organizing and we've finished that project, hopefully what we've done as part of that process is we have figured out um, spaces to put all of the items in our home. So we've designated a space in our home for each item. And, um, but part of the reason that our organizing breaks down is that we don't actually put the stuff away when we're finished with it. So we walk in the door and we drop our stuff by the front door or we set it down somewhere or we stick it wherever's closest to us because it's easier to do that than it is to put it away. And that's a number one reason why things that we once had organized quickly fall apart on us. It's because our habits are not allowing us to maintain that space that we've worked so hard to get under control. Another reason is we don't reevaluate. So organizing requires constant reevaluation. Well, not constant, but it requires attention uh, over time, reevaluation over time. So things happen. We get new hobbies and those new hobbies or new interests. And those things may bring new types of items into our homes that we haven't um, considered before. That may, there may be a big gifting season. It's either our birthday or it's a holiday where we're gonna get gifts and we haven't accommodated for these new gifts or these new things in our homes. Um, and so, you know, it, it, because we haven't accommodated for that, then we're not prepared when we have these new things and we don't know where to put them. So, um, uh, or it may be that, um, you know, you're entering a new phase of life and something has changed. There may have been a big sale on something. And so you went and you bought, you know, 40 packages of paper towels and now you need to figure out where to put those. And so what happens is if we haven't reevaluated that or if we don't, don't reevaluate and we just take the new thing, whatever it is, and stick it where there's an open space, then that also starts that cycle of decline that can occur. And before you know it, those empty spaces are now full with things that don't make sense alongside the other stuff on that, 
on that shelf or in that drawer or whatever. Um, that's how our junk drawers get crazy is that we've got this place that we've decided to catch all space and we just keep dumping stuff in there. And before you know it, there's there, it's just, it's a mishmash of things. Um, and then the third reason is we wait until it's out of control to do something about it. I had a friend who giggled at me a little bit about my bathroom reorganization. And she said, you know, your before looked perfectly fine, um, at least, you know, to her eye. And, um, and that, that is true. I thought about that. It's not probably the most dramatic before and after, but that's actually part of, you know, a, 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 a habit that I would, or a way of thought I would encourage you to think about is if we let it get out of control, then it is now a project again. Whereas if we deal with it when it's just a little bit messy, then, you know, it's, it's less of an ordeal to get to, you know, to right the ship. So let's talk about just some solutions then. So if we're, if we haven't developed good habits, if we aren't reevaluating our spaces and if we're letting it get out of control, how do we actually take, uh, you know, uh, make sure that doesn't happen to us? So I just want to throw out three possible solutions, um, to, to help with this situation. So, for the first one, not developing good habits. I would suggest developing some easy rules for yourself, some easy habits, things that, that speak to getting things put back where they belong in their homes that you've designated for your spaces. So one is something along the lines of don't put it down, put it away. Um, another one is, um, uh, uh, do it now, not later. And then this other one, it's, it can, it's been referred to as the one minute rule, the 30 second rule, the two minute rule, the five minute rule, pick your time frame. But the idea there is if it's something that can be done in under two minutes, do it right away. Don't hesitate doing it. And most of our things to be put away can be done in, in under two minutes. Now, if you're talking about putting away kids Legos, I'm sorry, that's going to take more than two minutes. <laughs> but, you know, the, the general idea is that it's, you know, put it, um, if, you're, if you're able to put something away uh, or able to deal with it in under two minutes, go ahead and just do it and it'll be done and it doesn't stack up because it's easier to take care of it uh, as it's occurring uh, rather than, hey, Jennifer, rather than waiting until it's, it's a, big, a big thing. Um, in terms of, of doing the reevaluation, create a schedule for yourself. And it may be monthly, it may be quarterly, whatever your tolerance is. And make it a, uh, a quarterly schedule in which you evaluate one space or one category of item in your home. And just look at that one item. See if it needs to be tweaked or if you, there's any decluttering you need to do in there. So, you know, go look at once a, you know, January, make that your bathroom month, February, make that your kitchen month, March, et cetera. Because honestly, even if you're only evaluating a space once a year, that is better than not evaluating it at all um, and letting it again, get out of, out of hand. So just pick one thing and just do a check. So I would, that would be a, a recommendation. You can tweak your organization, you can declutter, you can, if there are new things you need to accommodate in, that have crept into your life o over that, uh, that last period of time, then you've got, you've, you've got a schedule to maintain it. And then the last one, and I kind of mentioned this a little bit already when I was talking about the bathroom uh, linen closet, was uh, tackle it when it gets a little messy. Wait until it's a little messy, and then that's when you deal with it, rather than putting it off until it's a whole big thing. Because dealing with a whole big thing is, is much more uh, depressing than trying to deal with something that's just a little bit messy. So get it while it's still a small project instead of a great big project, and uh, it'll be easier to take care of, less daunting, to take care of. Now, if you are um, more 
leaning more toward the clutter blind end of the spectrum, you don't really notice clutter, um, you don't notice messy, then use that same schedule idea to force yourself to look. And you know, is, is there, are there things out of place here? Is, are the categories that I've set up here not, uh, do they not make sense anymore? Um, and so for, you know, you can use that schedule to force yourself to actually look if it's not something that you're going to typically just notice on your own. But if you do notice it on your own, you're, you're walking by, you're like, wow, that shelf is a mess. Then, you know, the next time you've got a, you know, commercial break during your favorite TV show, go deal with that shelf. Uh, and then that way it won't be a big, a big thing. So that is it for, uh, for what I wanted to talk about today for maintenance. So again, we're, the reason that those things, uh, that, that our spaces get out of control is that we don't develop good habits, we don't reevaluate, and we let it get out of control. So um, adopt the one minute rule or the don't put it down, put it away rule, and use schedules to help you with checking out your categories, checking out if it needs to be decluttered, and also, is it starting to get a little messy? So that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, thanks Kristen and Jennifer for joining me and I will see you guys next time. Bye.